Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry. I'm one of blowers. Good morning. It's about 11.30. And looks like uh, as we near that date, Monday, where the weatherman says that we might get four to 10 inches of snow, it looks like that's gonna happen now. Even though the temperature is gonna be hovering around the 34, 35 degree area, I have a feeling that the snow's gonna be wet and slushy to start. But then as nightfall comes, the weather will drop below 32 degrees and we'll get a good amount of snow. At least that's what they're forecasting and we're still about a couple of days out from that. So we'll see what happens. In the meantime, there are people contacting me about snow blowers. This is my last snow commander. Three years ago, I bought 11 of them from a local landscape company that did snow removal. They upgraded to two stage at the time. So I made a great deal and I got, I bought 11 snow commanders. If you guys understand about snow commanders, you'll know that it's uh, at the time, Toro's largest single stage. It has three rubber paddles in the front, right? And four wheels. You can see two there there's two straight caster wheels that's underneath it. It has the power propel feature where when you engage the auger, the auger will engage. But if you pull the handle all the way to the uh, other handle, right, the snowblower itself will pivot forward, causing the paddles to rub against the ground, therefore assisting a forward propel. They call that a power propel. At the time, the electric start was all fried, so I removed the electric start. So it doesn't have an electric start. This is number 11. This is the last of my snow commanders from the original 11. I bought each for $47. It was 11 snow commanders for 500 bucks. I have since sold 10. So my profit has been $3,000 uh, $3, so far. Uh, I have this listed for 300 and we'll see if it starts up. If it does, I'm gonna meet a guy at a parking lot and we'll see what happens today. So let's see if it starts up. As you know, I recently changed the magneto on this because it had trouble starting. I tried to change the magneto twice. The first time I bought the magneto and it wasn't the right one, it didn't fit. When I put the old one back on, it started. But then when I tried it a couple of days later, it didn't work. So I went and bought the correct magneto. I think it was like 12 bucks or something like that. I think it's the right one, it fits. Let's see if it starts up. First time I'm starting it up, cold start in a couple weeks. Sometimes you don't even have to prime it. Key to start, choke. I'll pull it a couple of slow times just to get some primer. Sometimes that works. Excellent compression. Let's see if there's gas first. It should be gas. Well, maybe there's no gas. Let me take it to run. Maybe I just need to get some gas. I've got some true fuel here, 50 to 1 mix. I got some from uh, my friend Nick from Bilford. Just putting the remainder of this can in there. Huh? 
Maybe I won't sell it today. <laughs> Magneto, let's see if it starts up again with one pull. Just needed gas. the snowblower into my van uh, I'm gonna be meeting the guy in about an hour at the local church where I do all my transactions and uh, hopefully he'll buy it I do want to get rid of it because I've had it for quite a long time and I never use it so while I'm pretty firm on the 300 honestly if I if the guy offers me anything more than 200 I'm gonna let it go because it's my last one I don't use it it's been tough to sell for the past year or so or two because of the lack of snow. I should take the opportunity. If anybody wants it, I should just get rid of it and get something for it. You know, I've made enough profit on it already. It's time to let it go. Uh, early mailbag. This is the carburetor that I bought for my TB22 Troy built. weed whacker I don't usually spend a lot of money on weed whackers if at all if they don't get if I can't get them running because the carburetor is bad I look at the overall condition of it and if it doesn't need anything else other than the carburetor I might consider buying it because this one model is the flex version where you can detach the trimmer head right this part over here and you can replace it with like an edger or a saw, you know, the attachments that you can buy for this model. This model is not the super bottom of the line model. It, it actually has options. So I thought it was worthwhile to go and buy it. It has everything here. All you need is some string and the carburetor. So if the carburetor was going was gonna to cost more than $15, I probably would have said, no, I'm not going to do it. And I'm just going to sell this uh, 
weed trimmer as is to somebody for like 10 or $20, you know what I mean? Even if I was lucky enough for somebody to want it for $20, you know, but you never know. But I looked on eBay, I looked up the parts diagram for this model, the TB22, right? Troy built. And I found the parts diagram, gave me the part number, I took the part number and I put it into eBay. eBay came out with like 50 or so results. I sorted lowest price. The lowest price that's being sold in the United States, not China, was this one right here. It's the exact replacement carburetor for this uh, weed whacker. It was only $7.49 free shipping. Plus tax, it was like $8.14. You know what I mean? So eight bucks for it delivered to my house to get this thing running. Then once it's running, I could probably sell it now for 80 bucks. You know what I mean? So that is worthwhile. Honestly, I'd be happy if I got rid of it for 50 bucks too, you know? But uh, we're gonna put this carburetor on real quick and see if it starts up. I'm thinking it's the carburetor. Uh, and then after that, if it doesn't start up after that, that's it. I'm just gonna sell it locally for like 30 bucks or something like that with a brand new carburetor. Or I'll keep the carburetor for a future application and sell it as is for 20 bucks, you know? We'll see what happens. Before the guy comes at the church, I want to try real quick and just install this uh, new carburetor I have. Just two slotted screws or torques, whichever you want to choose. Loosen these two studs, take them out, and the carburetor will come right off. You disconnect the two fuel lines, remembering which one it goes to, as well as the throttle cable Z-bend into the throttle lever. Remember to take pictures before you remove things so you'll know exactly how to do it. But because I've been doing this for a bunch of years, I kind of know just from looking. Remember to pull this off slowly so that you don't damage the gasket. As you can see, the cover is off and this just comes right off. There's a little Z-bend that goes into the lever for the throttle. Just remember how it goes. Check the gasket between the Intake manifold and the carburetor, it's very important. Take note of where um, the fuel lines go. Black one's on the bottom, clear return line is on the top. I'm gonna pull them off slowly. That just came right off. This one's a little bit difficult to get off. Matter of fact, it's seized on here. I'm gonna have to get some pliers, and just take a pair of pliers, just gripping it, rotating like that, break the seal and then pull it right off. There's the old carburetor. Because I got a new carburetor is because I think that the diaphragm on the inside is worn. Now this one has a gasket on it. This new one that I got does not come with a gasket. That's a bad thing because now I'll have to compare the two, make sure it's exactly the same and it does appear to be exactly the same. You do have the gasket for the outer, but on the inner, which is the most important, is right here. So I'm going to have to slowly try to remove this gasket without damaging it, right? And it looks like I can do it without damaging it. There we go. There's the bad one. Here's the good one. I'm a little concerned because there's a hole here and there's no hole in the gasket. Look at the old one. The old one also had it. Actually, the old one has two holes. Or actually, wait a minute. Hmm, there's something rotten in Huntington because there's no hole there. I wonder if the holes matter. Only one way to find out. Just put it on. So I'm gonna install this now. Okay, so I was mistaken. The one with the holes here is to the gasket on the intake manifold and the gasket is already on here. So the black one goes on the bottom the return line that's clear goes on the top. We're gonna connect the Z-bend into the hole. And this gasket actually goes on the, this one. And yes, it does block the hole that's in here. We'll try it out, see what happens. And try to remember the orientation that I had. Mm -hmm. 
Stuff like that. Match up the holes. It's so cold outside that I can't feel my fingers. There you go. And just tighten down the bolts. So I've screwed on the backing of the air filter base onto the carburetor with the gasket. It is blocking that hole, but maybe it's designed that way. If it doesn't, you'll know that might be the issue, that you might have to just poke a hole to allow that breather. Anyway, we hooked up the throttle cable and we see that it moves freely. We have the fuel lines connected. Even though I don't have that much fuel in here, let's see if the carburetor sucks up the gas from the inside of the um, gas tank. It'll take a few pumps to see if it sucks it up. And you know, honestly, I might have to refill the um, gas tank with gas because it hardly has any. You're not gonna be able to test it right without some gas. I have some 50 to one true fuel. This is pre-mixed already fuel. I got this container from my friend, Nick from Bellport. He gets it for free from work, so he gave me some. So it, I filled it up to about three quarters full. It's almost full. This is already mixed, so you don't have to go through the uh, checking if it's 40 to 1, 50 to 1. This is a 50 to 1 machine. So now that we know that it's full of fuel, we'll primer it a few times and see if it's sucking fuel into the... Uh, carburetor. And it's not. It should have fuel by now. Okay, so it took some doing, but I finally uh, was continuously pressing the uh, primer bulb and it finally popped a little, I guess. It had to break a seal or something like that because of shipping. It's been sitting so long, whatever. And so now it's sucking fuel into it and also pushing the return fuel out back into the tank. So we've primed it a bunch of times. Let's see if it starts. We'll put it on choke. Give it a couple pulls. It's on. So it didn't start, doesn't start, but I always notice that this carburetor, while it's secured on here, it moves along with the engine block. I don't recall any other weed whacker that does that, unless it's designed to float. But I wanted to check it out anyway, so I removed the two nuts, uh, screws that hold the gas tank here, and then there's, there's a Torx bolt right over there that moves along with it. So I'm going to tighten that bolt. I'm going to see if there's another one on this side. Because if something is loose, something may not be sealing correctly in terms of combustion. You know, you need a tight seal, good PSI. So that might be the issue too, you know. But I'm a little surprised that it doesn't start up at least a little bit, you know what I mean? Got a Torx tool here. I'm just tightening this bolt. And now it doesn't move. It's awesome. It bothered me that it moved. So this bolt was loose. I'm gonna put this gas tank back and we're gonna try it again. So I just put the gas tank back on. Let's give her a couple of rips, see if it starts. Go. 
I'm gonna um, fix this timing a little. So that's what it was. Uh, the engine block wasn't affixed onto the uh, weed whacker frame itself. Therefore, there might have been some kind of a um, compression leak between the engine block and whatever it was, the muffler or um, the other part of it. I'm, I'm not really 100% sure, but because it was loose like that, it's not supposed to be. Now that I tightened that uh, Torx bolt, it's now nice and tight, and as you can see, starts just fine now and it idles great um, weed packers itself don't idle very well uh, on most models if you don't tweak them you know and this one uh, I didn't fix the fuel adjustment screws at all you know it's prefixed from factory and it uh, runs and idles just fine I'm gonna put some trimmer uh, string on it but first I'm gonna go head on to the uh, church guy texted me says he's five minutes away let's see if we get that snow commander uh sold today So I'm back, cha-ching, 300 bucks. I just went to the store. <laughs> so uh, fantastic day because every day that you sell a piece of equipment for money, it's uh, rewarding because that's my whole thing. I'm a flipper. Get stuff for free or super, super cheap. If you have the know-how to fix it, turn it around and make money out of it. You know, at the same time, doing what you enjoy doing, you know, it's fun. Uh, so now I'm gonna put some uh, string on the trimmer head and uh, fire it up.
to my buddy Robert Lett, aka Jungle Bob, in Birmingham, Alabama, for donating $20 to the channel. Uh, he felt that I should, he should contribute to the channel in that way because he's touched. And I'll tell you how he's touched is because I was watching the news the other day and uh, they were saying how a tornado touched down in Birmingham, Alabama. And I says, well, my buddy Jungle Bob lives out there. I'm going to email him and see if he's doing okay. And uh, he appreciated that I cared about it, uh, whether or not he was okay. And you know what? That's just natural for me. You know what I mean? If I know somebody in that area, I want to make sure they're okay. So I just reached out to him. No big deal. But thanks a lot, Jungle Bob, for donating to the channel. It's very much appreciated. If you guys would like to donate, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Every dollar counts in helping me make videos every day. Also, shout out to Ronald Marmerstein from Paramus, New Jersey, who not only donated to the channel uh, about a week ago, he also bought some of my new stickers. Thanks a lot, Ronald, and welcome aboard. So here we go. Got some string on there. It took some doing, I'm not gonna lie. Apparently, I put it on there. The bolt was too long. The guy had kind of jigged a long bolt, it wouldn't fit. So I had to find a shorter bolt, right? And then when I put it on, it still didn't kind of flex, you know? It's supposed to be a bump. You bump it and then it releases. There was no spring on the inside. So I had to find a spring and the spring was too long. So I had to cut it in half, put the spring in there. Now it looks like it works. Let's see if it fires up, fires up, fires up, fires up. <laughs> So that's it. That's all it took was an $8 brand new carburetor and some string. We got this baby running. When the spring comes, I'll be able to sell this between $50 and $75. And I only put uh, $8 into it and some string and some time. Uh, my arms pulled out a little. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Today's a good day. Got my uh, string trimmer fixed, right? Uh, sold my last Snow Commander uh, for $300. So it, it's definitely a good day. They're saying four to 10 inches of snow on Monday, and I can't wait till that happens because I have an electric snowblower that I need to review. I've been putting off the review for close to a month. I'm glad I'll be able to maybe <laughs> finish that review and we can see how this electric snowblower works. Uh, I've never been a big believer in electric snowblowers or electric anything for that matter, you know what I mean? Everything I love is gas. It's just so much more power, you know? But it could do a good job, who knows, you know, we'll try it. Uh, and uh, stay tuned for my uh, mini selfie YouTuber vlogger clip-on ring light coming tomorrow. Thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. This is Jungle Bob in Birmingham, Alabama. We'll see you next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.